While building REST web services, you might have asked, should we create an object to represent the resource, or should we just expose the domain itself? If you go with the just expose the domain, it doesn't feel natural to embed Jackson annotations within the code or create a dependency on the Jackson JSON library. What if you decide to change JSON parser to JSON? Would you go through the entire set of business objects to refactor and test? If you partition service developers and domain developers, would it add confusion or degrade code readability? Luckily, there is a way to use Jackson to include or exclude and rename properties outside the lower level object with the use of Jackson mixins. To get started, let's create a Maven project in Eclipse, add Jackson dependencies and Guava. Next we will create a person class that contains an ID, social security number, and name. You can think of the mixin as a proxy, meaning before Jackson converts the Java array list to JSON array, it checks if there is an associated mixin for the target class. If there is, it overlays the corresponding field and annotations. We will create a person mixin to house our rules. Keep in mind that we have a fictitious rule that we can't edit the existing person class and we don't want to add a dependency on Jackson as we may change the future JSON implementation. For each one of our snippets we will write a unit test to validate the behavior of the mixin. In the setup method let's initialize an object mapper specifying the mixin and setting the pretty print in Jackson property returning an object writer. Probably the most common is renaming a fields or properties. Our first rule is when we marshal the person object to JSON, we want to rename the name field to full name. We do this by adding a JSON property annotation and specify the annotation value with the name we want to convert it to. Using JSON path, we will parse and validate the full name making sure it equals Jack Johnson. The social security number can be categorized as sensitive in the sense that you wouldn't want to expose it outside your internal systems. We have been asked to filter out social security number when exposed the person object as JSON. We can do this by adding the JSON ignore in our person mixin interface. Again, we will validate with JSON path and since the social security number doesn't exist, a path not found exception it will be thrown. As you can see, using Jackson mixin provides a powerful way to decouple lower level code from consumers, providing a JSON view representation of objects. Thanks for joining in today's level up. Have a great day.